Hello and welcome to this edition of Assembly Extra. Today we delve into the work of committees to look at how and why they run inquiries. And if you think that the Speaker just keeps order in the Chamber, think again. We follow Speaker William Hay and find out there's much more to his role than meets the eye. William Hay was elected as Speaker of the Northern Ireland Assembly on the 12th of May 2011. Now in his second term, he was the first Speaker to be elected with cross-party support. You are most likely to recognise the Speaker as the Chair of Plenary Debates, but as we find out, there's a lot more to his role both in and outside of the Chamber. Well, it's very important for me as Speaker and for our Deputy Speakers to make sure that we have the smooth running of the Assembly. Order members, the next item in the order paper is a motion on committee membership. As with other similar motions, this will be treated as a business motion, therefore uh, there will be no debate. The Speaker presides over plenary sittings, which involves calling members to speak, maintaining order in the Chamber and responding to issues raised by members. The Assembly has agreed a number of standing orders. Uh, very important that Debates are kept very focused on what the issue is and being debated uh, within the chamber. Let me warn the member. Let me warn the member. And I'm speaking to the member direct. And I'm trying to guide the member. Let us come back to the budget. The speaker also oversees the voting procedure in the chamber, which involves MLAs voicing or formally registering their vote on a particular issue. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary of any, no. no. Clear the lobbies, the question will be put in three minutes. As a result of the Speaker asserting the rules and authority of the Chair, he often has some tough decisions to make, which have drawn criticism in the past. Matter of respect, what decision I might take, I will not please everybody. Uh, but I would hope that members uh, would understand that decisions are taken are taken for the best workings of the Assembly. And I know sometimes members, and especially the press and the wider public, don't understand some of the rulings that need to be made uh, within the Chamber. Um, but my job is very much to protect the integrity of the Chamber and to protect the integrity of the work uh, that goes on in and around the Chamber. And the only time the public really see your work is within the Chamber. But there's a lot of work that goes on outside the Chamber to make all the components of the Assembly work for everyone. A lot of preparation and planning goes into making plenary happen. The business committee, chaired by the speaker, meets to agree what topics should be debated in the chamber and when. On a Monday and Tuesday morning, the speaker also meets with the deputy speakers and a number of assembly staff, including business clerks and legal advisors. This is a chance to discuss the forthcoming plenary business and procedures, as well as to anticipate any issues which may arise. Parliament Buildings is managed by a corporate body called the Assembly Commission. This cross-party group is also chaired by the Speaker. Well, the Assembly Commission is responsible for a number of areas within the Assembly. First of all, the property, the services, and, and very much the resources that needs to go uh, to the smooth running of the entire organisation. And as we go through very difficult economic times, as a Commission, we need to be continually be reminded of looking at efficiency savings throughout the entire organisation and that has been something that has been ongoing now for some time. There is a great deal of international interest in the progress of the Assembly and the Speaker has welcomed many important figures from all around the world to Parliament buildings. We have a number of very key visits and visitors who come uh, to the Assembly here whether it's heads of states, whether it's ambassadors, uh, some very senior politicians. I think it is important uh, that we welcome all of these visitors. They want to listen and learn and take something away from our process here uh, within the Northern Ireland Assembly. But it's not just VIPs and political representatives who are made welcome. The doors of Parliament buildings are open to the public who can come up for a visit, take a guided tour, attend a plenary sitting or watch a committee meeting. This building belongs to the people that it represents. 
And I think that is a very, very important message. And I have certainly championed that we open the doors of Parliament buildings here. I think it is important that people are allowed to come here to see around Parliament buildings. Not only see the building, but see their elected representatives work for them. Parliament Buildings is a busy place and the Speaker has hosted a wide range of events designed to promote an understanding of the Assembly. Although based in Parliament Buildings, the Assembly holds many external events to develop links with the wider Northern Ireland community. I do believe that we have got to get out of Parliament Buildings and engage with the wider public in Northern Ireland on the work of the Assembly. It is vitally important uh, that the wider public out there understands the working of this assembly, but most anything else, take ownership of what the assembly is here doing in Northern Ireland. During his role, the speaker has seen the assembly evolve to become an institution which can now enjoy the many benefits of stability and consistency. Well, I think if we look at 2007 through 2011, uh, an assembly was, it was bedding down, and I think by 2015 or 16, by the time this assembly ends and we go to elections again, uh, I have no doubt this assembly will very much be judged on what it has delivered out there and very difficult economic times. And like any other parliamentary institution, we will see changes as we move this assembly forward uh, to a situation where I think we could end up with, with with a smaller assembly, but also with a very effective assembly. And all of this can only be done by a political agreement. The role of the Speaker is a busy one with many different elements, ranging from being the figurehead of the Northern Ireland Assembly to developing important links with other parliaments. To find out more information on the work of the Speaker, you can visit the Assembly website or come up to Parliament Buildings and watch him live in the Chamber. Assembly committees play an important role in monitoring and checking the work of government departments. They are made up of a chair, deputy chair and nine other members from a mix of parties. Part of their role is to hold inquiries into important issues. Here we learn how and why. The committee will look and see what a department is providing for and if we think there's a gap in that provision then a committee may decide to hold an inquiry to gather evidence uh, produce a report which makes recommendations and then we'll, we'll apply pressure on the department uh, to address any shortfalls that the committee may highlight. Once a committee has chosen the subject of its inquiry, it agrees terms of reference. That is, what the committee wants to examine and find out. When a committee is ready to gather evidence, it will place a call for evidence in the newspapers. This is when it asks people to write in with their views on the issues the inquiry is looking into. All the details on the inquiry and what the committee wants to hear about are placed on the Assembly's website. An inquiry usually follows these steps. People offer their views and they may be invited to come and talk to the committee. The committee may hold an event if there are lots of people it wants to hear from. The committee will also visit places or companies related to the inquiry. Once all the information is in, the committee produces a report with recommendations which goes to the Assembly for debate and it is then sent to the department. When committees produce a report, we expect the department to respond to that, to implement the recommendations that have taken place. If a committee feels that the department isn't responding quickly enough, or fulfilling everything that the committee wanted, we could call back officials from that department, or indeed the minister, uh, to ask why they haven't fulfilled uh, the recommendations in a report. And indeed, other organisations that lobby Stormont, they will use often the reports produced by committees to demand actions to be taken by the department as well. If you want to have your voice heard on issues that are important to you, your work, or your community, then get involved and take part in a committee inquiry. Well, that's just about it from this edition of Assembly Extra. But remember, you can keep up to date with what's happening here at the Assembly on our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. 
But before we go, if you think that the Assembly is just about meetings and debates, this next piece might just change your mind. I chose these colours because I like these colours and they're really bold. Mm -hmm.